Hey guys, good morning, it's Scott. And I don't know about you, but stress and anxiety for me are one of those topics that, I mean, I think about it a lot because we all struggle with stress and anxiety of different levels. And I've always wanted to learn more about how do we deal and how do we process better, not only like understanding our bodies and where it comes from, but like what are the things that we can do in our life to lower or decrease stress in a reasonable way because I feel, I don't know about you and I'd love to hear, and I'm gonna introduce my, my guest here in a second. We're gonna talk about this. Is I'd love to you know, hear what kind of issues or things do, does stress and anxiety present in your life because I like to learn about what are practical things we can do to help lower it. Because mm -hmm. I think it's, you know, it's something that we have to embrace and accept that it's normal part of the way we're wired as human beings, mm -hmm. that we're going to have some stress and anxiety in our life. So what can we do to decrease and minimize its impact on us, both from an emotional and mental standpoint and from a health standpoint? So anyway, good morning again. And I'm sitting here with health coach Heather Wise. And Heather, thanks for being with me, by the way. Thanks so much for having me, Scott. I'm this is, yeah, this is really fun. Yeah, I'm excited. Heather and I are actually going to, on one of my other pages, in a very short while, we're going to record a podcast today. Uh, Heather and I met a few weeks ago, and we've been getting to know each other, and she's really knowledgeable around this area. But before we do the podcast, I wanted to jump on and do a couple live videos with Heather and talk about some of these topics that I think would be really helpful for you and anybody else in your life who might be suffering either from a combination of gut issues and stress or maybe one um, over another so mm -hmm. we'll dive uh, we'll dive in okay. and uh, whether you see this now or later if you have any questions around these issues please send them our way we'd love to help and I'm sitting next to an expert she's really knowledgeable so she can give you some inside value insight and value so Heather let's start with this you know you were telling me one time that alcohol actually a lot of us look at alcohol even social drinkers like myself where we like to go out and relax. We have this story in our head about alcohol will help us take the edge off. And you told me a little bit one time, and there's certainly nothing really wrong with a, one drink of beer or wine, and you can share more about that, but we have this story or mindset about alcohol helping us relax, but in a way mm -hmm. it can trigger other things that aren't so healthy for us. What's that all yeah. about? So yeah, it turns out that, and I did a lot of research on this topic for my book, which is called A Gut Feeling. Um, and it talks all about the science of the microbiome and how stress can actually affect our health through our microbiome. And the way alcohol comes into play, Scott, is that it really has a huge effect on our cortisol levels. So, you know, we, ha we sit down, we have a drink with our friends, and we think, you know, we think this is going to help us manage our stress or it's mm -hmm. going to help us, like you said, take the edge off. Um, but it actually has an opposite effect because a couple hours after drinking it actually triggers our cortisol levels, which triggers our insulin levels to go up, which triggers a blood sugar pendulum swing. So it's actually disrupting our blood sugar, it's disrupting our cortisol, and it's leading us into a cycle which then can cause us to reach for sweets or high carb foods, which can, you know, as you know, can kind of trigger that cycle again. So it, it actually just sets us on this pendulum swing, um, Scott, and it's a cycle that, that really is hard to break except by doing things, taking action to actually manage our stress in healthier ways. So like um, taking a break after work with your friends and you know relaxing outside of nature, going for a walk, having a hot bath, mm -hmm. having healthy food, home-cooked food. Um, meditation, obviously, yoga, mm -hmm. things like that are actually going to affect our enteric nervous system, which is an entire nervous system that exists within our gut and helps us produce those calming chemicals that actually make us feel relaxed in a natural way like GABA and serotonin. Those are produced in our gut. So we really have to encourage the growth of those and the production of that of those chemicals if we want to manage stress long term. Do, do you think that, that people need to know? So like a lay person like me who doesn't know a lot of the interior, you know, the workings and even the lingo and the language, mm -hmm. um, do we need to know or be as familiar? Not not to your level, but do mm -hmm. should we all be learn? I think this is a good lesson. Should we all learn more about what's going on inside our body so that we can then make better decisions? Because I, mm -hmm. I, I like to look at it from a practical, realistic way people who have a lot going on throughout the day and they get home from work 
you know, we know movement's good. We know healthy, fresh food is good and mm -hmm. maybe not jumping too much into alcohol. But, but how much do we need to understand about all this stuff that you're saying? Yeah, so I found that in order to recover from my own chronic stress and anxiety that I had for years as a teenager and throughout college, that I really needed to understand all of this. And I come from a bit of a science background. I studied neuroscience and nutrition in school. So I was really fascinated by how it all works. I don't necessarily think that a person needs to understand the extent to which, <laughs> you know, I do. But in my book, I just kind of talk about, you know, the basics workings of how our microbiome affects our health and how stress affects the health of our microbiome so that we can really start to put pieces together in our own lives because I think a lot of us, we recognize that certain, you know, lifestyle factors or dietary factors are affecting how we're feeling. Mm -hmm. But we haven't like put all the dots together. So in my book, it, I take you on a journey where you're really following me in my self journey of self-discovery to discover what foods, what habits, what behaviors are really contributing to my health problems. And I used to struggle from a lot of health problems, Scott. Mm -hmm. I know I mentioned that nowadays I don't have... Um, a lot of health problems, but I used to, and and they started from when I was really young. It started with imbalanced blood sugar, hypoglycemia, anxiety, um, weight gain, skin problems, depression. I mean, you name it. Like, I had all sorts of health, chronic health problems from a really young age, mm -hmm. and and I really was like, you know, this isn't normal. Like, I'm supposed to, this is supposed to be the prime of my life. Yeah. Why am I already struggling with all these health problems? Sorry to jump in, but you know what? You know what I start to think about when I listen to your and thanks for sharing some of that because we want it. It's relatable, mm -hmm. and I'm sure there's so many people who have experienced the same. Is that mm -hmm. I, I know um, I don't want to date everybody per se, but you know I grew up in the '80s. I was a kid, mm -hmm. you know, growing up, and nobody ever talked about this stuff. Even in the '90s when I was in college and then getting out of college, like, mm -hmm. you didn't talk about some of these health issues that you have. Now, I know it's in large part because we know a lot more now, right? Mm -hmm. But do you think that the other part of my question or comment is, has society changed, um, you know, between foods and processed stuff and even chemicals and things? Like, is there, are there things going around in our environment that are contributing to this? Or have people always suffered from some of these same issues that you're bringing up? Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's a combination. It really depends on, you know, it's hard to say the whole world is, you know, in one, in one bit, but I mean, in Western culture, I think for a long time, you know, as of the advent of agricultural revolution, we've struggled with some of these health problems, mm -hmm. but it's, it actually, there is a main shift that has happened just in the past 100 years. And that's with the advent of refrigeration and pasteurization and, um, and basically preservatives that they're using in foods these days. And that includes, you know, other chemicals like that they use on crops for um, pesticides and herbicides. So all these chemicals that are now being introduced into our diet mm -hmm. are actually, um, they're designed oftentimes to kill superbugs. They're designed to kill bacteria and we're consuming them. And little did we mm -hmm. know that we have this entire community of bacteria within our bodies that we actually need to be healthy right and so consuming foods that have these chemicals are actually definitely damaging our health well and but uh, you you just triggered another good thought um well hopefully it's a good thought too but like we're supposed to consume like I, all right i know probiotics literally represent that you're putting bacteria in your body but what about like drinks and what's What's that drink? Kombucha, kombucha, kombucha. kombucha. <laughs> like so. So should people be more aware of like in, in replacing soda and other and juices with drinks like that? Or what? What kind of things can we intake that are going to help our microbiome and hopefully mm -hmm. reduce our stress? Yeah. So the first thing I work on with my clients when I start working with them is how to integrate some of these foods like you're talking about into their diet. And there's lots of ways to do it, but. You can essentially call them and put them in two categories, probiotics and prebiotics. So probiotics, that's literally consuming healthy bacteria that's living and alive. And then prebiotics, that is the food that 
um, you find on vegetables. So it's it's the fiber in vegetables. It's um, a lot of the byproducts of these fermented foods are prebiotics. They're leafy greens, things like that. That's the ideal food <clears throat> for this beneficial probiotic bacteria that we want in our bodies. So you can consume both in lots of different ways. And fermented foods, as you mentioned, kombucha being one example, sauerkraut being another, if they're unpasteurized and raw, then they contain both. So they really are the ideal food. Did you say sauerkraut? Yeah. Sauerkraut. It's good for you? Oh, yeah. I used to, my, my grandparents would always make uh, kobas and stuffed cabbage with yeah, sauerkraut. Kielbasa. And I didn't know uh -huh. that that was good for you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Kobas is really, really good for you. It contains both probiotics and prebiotics. And also yogurt. You know, mm -hmm. you have to make sure to read the ingredient label because, because they pasteurize the milk, then they're actually killing off a lot of it. So what they do is they add it back in during the process so they're using pasteurized milk which doesn't contain the bacteria but then they're adding it in to make the yogurt so they add it in, in the form of lactobacillus or bifovitin um for example but you want to look on the back of the of the ingredient label mm. and make sure that there's at least like five different strains and you want to make sure that it's organic obvious as well well so that you're not consuming any chemicals boy now i know when i'm <laughs> walking around whole foods why everybody's taking a long time and they're looking at lists and it's just there's so much to digest and process no pun intended with that so mm. i'm sitting here again you know what we're going to go a couple minutes longer because this is really helpful yeah. this is really helpful i want to give a few more nuggets for, for people to take in um, I'm sitting with certified health coach Heather Wise, who has a book out called A Gut Feeling, and I have her tagged. Make sure you look her up here on Facebook. Uh, you are on LinkedIn too, right? Yep. Um, you can find Heather on Instagram as well, and we'll give all that again at the end, but she, as you can tell, has a wealth of knowledge about inside our guts and how it relates to stress and anxiety and just overall health. Mm -hmm. um, what's, a, what's something that we can do in terms of... Um, you know, combining exercise and food, or let's talk a little bit about exercise. Mm -hmm. it, are there certain things like, let's talk about maybe an, a, a person who doesn't live in the gym five days a week mm -hmm. and do a lot of heavy weight training per mm -hmm. se, but they, they try to get in like 20 to 30 minutes a week. Mm -hmm. Are there certain things that people can do, even cardiovascularly or otherwise, or resistance training that helps and combines with these good foods that you're talking about to improve yeah. your gut? Yeah, well, so the gut microbiome actually is the biggest determining factor of our metabolism. So they found that, um, you know, which is basically the rate at which that we absorb the nutrients from our food and turn it into energy. And so they found that individuals who had undergone such severe um, medication treatment that their microbiome was completely depleted and they had to be basically... Um, you know, given a new microbiome through a stool, a stool sample from other individuals. So wait, wait, time out. Yeah. What do you mean given a new microbiome? So they would literally just insert stool fecal, from another person? fecal samples, yep. And so you can take it as a pill or it could be... Okay. <laughs> yeah. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't want to ask, like, how do they insert... <laughs> Never mind, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I think you, it's literally just swallowing a poop, okay. a poop pill. That's, that's what it is. But um, what, they, what happened was these individuals where their own microbiome had been completely disseminated and they took this new pill, they assumed the same body disposition and food cravings of that individual that they took, that, that they were consuming their fecal matter. So they literally, like if they used to be an overweight person okay. who craved soda or, you know, who craved hamburgers, now they were maybe like a lean person who craved Brussels sprouts. Like it was very strange. And their mood even and their personality changes as well. So this is all documented in research and I included it all in my book because I find it so fascinating how much our microbiome actually mm -hmm. affects our metabolism and affects our mood and affects our, our personality and affects our food cravings. And um, so I, I always recommend, you know, getting some exercise because yeah. exercise is a great way to manage stress. But that is how I emphasize it. So not as a way to lose weight, but as a way to manage stress. So whatever type of exercise helps you manage stress, if it's a long walk, if it's yoga, you know, whatever it is, like not killing yourself, not going to the gym, mm -hmm. because 
that's not good. If, if it's not helping you manage stress, if it's contributing to your stress levels, if you get stressed out at the thought of doing that mm -hmm. thing, I mean, of course, sometimes there's a little bit of stress at the onset of doing a workout, and then afterwards you feel a huge wave of reduced stress. But if it's helping you manage stress, then great. It's improving your health and your microbiome. If it's not helping you manage stress, then don't do it. I, I love that you um, inserted a little bit of a, a reference to mood in there, you know, and I notice, and I'm sure this goes for the majority of people. It's not like I'm unique in this, but when my energy, energy levels are low and for me, it usually, I think it results more from bad sleep for me mm -hmm. um, because I have um, a little bit of up and down erratic sleep at times. Mm -hmm. And then the days I didn't sleep or following a night, I didn't sleep so well, my energy is lower and I notice that it affects my mood. I'm not so sure it comes from food. Maybe it does. But, um, you know, do you talk a lot, be it in the book or just when you work with your clients? You know, stress is stress. But, you know, our mood and, and the energy we project is so important in today's mm -hmm. world. You know, how we attract people and connect with people. So do you talk a lot about just overall demeanor and mood and how important it is in, our, in, a, in living a healthy, productive, impactful life? Just the, your mood Yeah, overall. your mood, yeah. 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 I mean, the reason I yeah. sorry, sorry to jump back in is because when I thought about it, so we think about, at least for me for years, I thought about exercise as its mm -hmm. own entity. Mm -hmm. I think about diet and the food I eat as its own entity. Mm -hmm. I even sometimes thought of sleep as its own. I want to sleep well. Mm -hmm. I want to work out. I have to eat well. But what I've learned by meeting people like you, and there's mm -hmm. been other people in my community in the last year that I've really learned a lot from, mm -hmm. you know, that these are all really tied together. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're tied together in a way like, and then it affects your mood. That's, that's right. where I'm going. Right, right. <clears throat> I mean, it's true. Like all these, whatever, if you've noticed that, you know, exercise or eating a certain way affects your mood, then you should definitely do more of that. Um, the, you know, the activities that are improving your mood. I think a lot of people don't make those connections in mm -hmm. their brain. So they don't necessarily know like what it is that they're doing that's, you know, leading to them feeling great the next day but obviously like you know if we going back to drinking if we stay out all night drinking and the next day we're super depressed all day we oh, might yeah. make that connection mm -hmm. um, we might be a little bit you know a little bit tired all the next day and kind of have this low outlook on life is, is alcohol like sugar in that you know how they always say you get a sugar high and then you come down is alcohol like if you drink a lot one day and you're feeling good and you're happy, you're so-called happy, but then the next day you're really sluggish and down. Is it the same kind of thing? Yeah, know. it does work a lot like sugar. And um, one of the ways it does that is, like I mentioned earlier, <laughs> like by affecting our cortisol levels. So because a few hours after drinking, it's actually triggering our cortisol levels. It's triggering a blood sugar pendulum swing. And this pendulum swing can lead to um, blood sugar drop. And then the cortisol levels on top of that. So it's actually leading us to feel more stress and craving carbs and craving sugars. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, you heard it here from Heather Wise and uh, very wise when it comes to, you know, food, way of life and things that we can do to help our overall health. This is really helpful and really important. Um, we're going to jump, I'm going to let you jump in and share some more of your info. Um, mm -hmm. Heather and I are going to be recording a podcast very shortly, so make sure you check that out in the near future. We're going to jump over to my group page, Create Your Great. We're going to talk a little bit more about what Heather covers in her book. And Heather, why don't you leave this audience? Let's do a, um, well, first of all, tell everybody again where, where they can find you. Yep. So you can find me on Instagram, Heather Ann Wise. You can find me on Twitter at Heather A. Wise. And my website is HeatherAnnWise.com. And you can also find me on Facebook, which is under my book title, A Gut Feeling. And um, you can search my book on Amazon. It's available ebook and audiobook and hardcover. And um, it's called A Gut Feeling Conquer Your Sweet Tooth by Tuning Into Your Microbiome by Heather Ann Weiss. <laughs> it covers a lot. You're good. You got, you got all that down pat. Um, so, why don't we leave this audience with a call to action? If there was one thing that you would share with the group that's uh, like something that you can do this week, mm -hmm. what's one thought or step that people who, who've been watching this can take, even if it's just something, a, a mindset shift, what's mm -hmm. what call to action you would leave them with? I would say every day to set time aside to do something that is helping you to relax and manage stress in a healthy way. So whether that's taking a hot bath, making a hot cup of tea, doing introspective journaling, that's one of my favorite activities to do mm -hmm. where I just 
write like all the thoughts that are on my head and I just like write it all down and then afterwards I go back and read it and I say wow I had no idea I had all that on my mind mm -hmm. and then I'm you know that all that stuff is obviously contributing to my stress levels um, you know, talking to a close friend, making a home cooked meal, going for a long walk, doing yoga, meditation, all these things are really great things. So setting aside some time every day, even if it's just for five minutes to do some sort of stress relieving activity. I like it. I like it. All right. Five minutes a day. That's very doable. And we'll see you all again real soon. Thanks for joining us on this video. Check out Heather again online. She shared everywhere that she's uh, living right now. Check out her book. And we'll see you again really soon. Thanks again, Heather. Thanks so much, Scott, Bye. for having me. <laughs>